not doing anything. We don't feel like praying. We don't feel like lifting our hands up. But you know what? We got to do it anyhow. Amen. We got to praise the Lord anyhow. The Lord said through one of the Psalms, He said, Let everything that hath breath, let it praise ye the Lord. We need to. We're going to get some help here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If none of y'all won't ride around the church tonight, somebody else will. Amen. God is good tonight. He's worthy to be praised. I'm going to read a little bit tonight. I'll start the book of Genesis. Amen. Maybe do a little teaching. Do a little something to think about tonight. We can't preach till the preacher comes in here. Amen. I'll tell you what. God is good tonight. He's worthy to be praised. I'm going to praise him. I know where he brought me from. The devil might say, well, you ain't got nothing. But you know what? I can tell the devil. I say, devil, just look back there where I came from. Right. Just look where I came from. How many of us say, just look where I came from. Look where I started out. Look where I'm at now. Amen. God's really changed my life. Amen. And I'm a lot closer to him than I am to this world. He's, he's not coming. Brother Johnny and I, I don't want to be ready. Amen. And I, I do think about all the bad things. I, I see all the things that's going on in the world that we're living in and the things that people are teaching and preaching and how people are departing from the faith and giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And we're just watching how the world is coming in and they're just taking over. You know something? I've said this for many times down through the years. But once you let something in the church that ain't supposed to be in there, you won't, you won't be able to get rid of it. Now you might preach on it, you might you might grab it by the arm and take it, march it out the door, but once you let it get inside the church, you're not going to get rid of it, thank God, because it gets in and there and it gets a hold. And I'll tell you the same thing tonight. If you let things get in your mind and in your heart, and if you don't get rid of them, thank God, they'll get they'll take up their abode and you'll they'll be there, thank God, and you can't get rid of them. I'll tell you what, it takes God to move things out of the way. I mean, you look at the church world today. You look at the churches, and you just see how, thank God, that the church has changed. Yeah. You look how the things that people didn't used to believe, and they didn't, they would never allow that go on in their church. But now it's come into the church. Even the, all the things that we read about, and we hear about. Thank God, I, I've even I was reading a thing this week. It might have been last week, but I was reading a thing about out in California. Thank God about where they've got a law. They're trying to make a law. They're trying to bring it to a vote. Thank God to where you can't discriminate it because of somebody's sexual preference and any books or anything, TV programs or anything that, that goes against anybody's the way they live or the way they act, then it's going to be wrong. And they said that the Bible is one book that they need to get rid of. They want to outlaw the Bible because in California because it comes against what people live and the way people live. It comes against the homosexual movement. It comes against it, tells it it's wrong. But I'm on just like I was talking in Sunday school this morning. Don't you think that God hears the first heartbeat in a little child? When you're when mommy gets when she conceives a child and, and, and that first heartbeat, don't you think God hears that? Didn't he tell one of the prophets? He said, while you was in the womb, I knew who you was. Thank God. And don't you think God hears all the little hearts? I remember Brother Taylor saying one time he was preaching, and I never did forget it. He said, he said, there's going to be a lot of little red hands. It's going to be the end of day of judgment. It's going to be against people because of what they've done. Thank God. You think about a generation of people that they even kill their own children. Thank God. Probably the only thing that be worse than that is if they begin to eat them. Thank God. And I wouldn't say that that's not far off. Thank God. Because the devil's going to do everything that he can to destroy and to kill everything that stands for God. So what you have tonight, you better hold on to it. You better have strength, thank God, with the Lord. Because the Lord's coming back in a day and hour. And you think not, thank God. Man, we need to be ready. But I'm going to read a little bit tonight in the book of Genesis. And this is just a thought. Amen. You know, people talk about the Eve in the Garden of Eden, how she eat an apple. How many heard that before? Yeah. And for a long time, Sister Joyce, I thought that's what she eat. All the pictures and everything I'd ever seen where you'd see Eve, her and Adam, they're reaching for the apple on the tree. How many seen that? Well, that was a little old cartoon picture. And you know what? 
And that wasn't, harm, wasn't harmful at all, but you know what? It was deceiving. Yeah. It was deceiving. And you know what? It, it got a lot of things in our mind. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of things on TV and a lot of things on the internet and a lot of things that gets in our mind that we don't recognize the truth when it comes at us, thank God. Because we've learned, thank God, to adapt to things and go along with things, thank God. And I'll tell you what, every one of us, if you stop and think about it, the Bible said the true light shone up more and more into a perfect day. I want to see that perfect day of the Lord. But you know the Bible said it also said that sin and iniquity, it's going to wax worse and worse. People are going to get worse. And you know what? We can see those things out there. Thank God. I believe, thank God, that the old world, it's kind of helping us in a way. It's a showing us all the things that we're doing. Thank God. All the things that's going on out there. I don't want to get involved in that. I'm so glad that God got me out of that drug scene. I tell you what, I've looked down through the years and a lot of my friends, a lot of people that I run around with, Brother Johnny, they're already gone. People died in their 40s and their 50s, thank God. And I go to the cemetery and I walk by their graves and I think, you know, they've been gone for 20 years. They've been gone for 10 years. I, I said, here I am, see her again. I should have been there with them. But God, you had mercy on me. You had something for me to do. And if I can praise him while I'm here, I want to praise him tonight. How many want to praise the Lord? I, I'll tell you why you got strength in your body. Don't let the devil take your praise away from you. Don't let him take your joy away. Don't let, don't let him make you ashamed. I don't need to God always lift him up and praise him. God is looking for people to praise him and to worship him and to sing and, and glorify his name. I just want to read this tonight. Chapter 2 verse 8 where I'm going to start. Maybe I won't keep you all on tonight. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know, there was two rivers, there was a garden that was planted there, and it said it grew all manner of fruit. Everything that you could ever imagine as a fruit was growing in that garden. But there was also a tree there, thank God, of life. Now, I don't know what that tree of life looks like. I know that over in the Bible, I know a lot of teachers, they try to go over and use the fig tree and different things, thank God. But you know what? I don't know what it looks like, but I know one thing. I know that when we partake of it, thank God that we'll be able to live forever. How I many say amen? And I tell you what, I believe that Jesus is that tree of life, thank God. I think he's the very life, thank God. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I mean, and say amen. And they said when they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, he said there was a flaming, so there was a, an, an angel left at the gate of, of Eden, thank God, to, which kept the way of the tree of life, thank God. And nobody can get back into that tree of life unless we go through Jesus Christ. Everybody you knows where death come upon everyone, upon every man, every woman, all of them sought God. They went up on the mountain. They offered up sacrifices to him. But it's all, it's all in trouble, thank God, because God, they, God had departed from them. He had put them out of the Garden of Eden. And they, the only way they could seek God was try to go up on a mountain or something like that, Brother Johnny. But you know what? They didn't know, thank God, that when Jesus came down here, he was the very way, thank God. That was the way back into the Garden of Eden. That was the way, the tree of life. He said everything of God he was. Uh, he was the very encyclopedia of the Almighty God. He was the good shepherd, thank God. Hallelujah to God, he was the shepherd of the sheep, thank God. He said he was the bread. He said he was the life, thank God. He said he was the vine, thank God. He said, I am the vine and you are the branch. Tell me glad that we're planting in that vine tonight. And he's the only one that can help us to grow and encourage us. I just want you to know that there was also a tree there. Thank God, a tree of good and evil. Thank God, it wasn't an apple tree or a prune tree. Hallelujah to God. I don't know what kind of tree it was as far as we're looking at a tree, but I know that tree bring forth fruit. I know someplace in the Bible, he said, men represented men as being trees. Thank God, but I'm going to tell you what, it makes a difference in that, what kind of fruit we take or take of. I'm going to get over here before I get too ahead of myself. I'm going up to the third chapter. I'm going to read the first verse. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, 
Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, everybody, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall what? Not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as what? Gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, now listen to this, and a tree to be desired to make one what? Make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat it, and gave it also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Thank God. Now, I just want you to thank God. Whatever kind of fruit it was, whatever it was, it opened up their it opened up their eyes. Thank God the things that they was able to see. It says, thank God, it goes on to read, thank God, after they had partaken of this fruit, they knew that they was naked. Thank God. And I know there's a lot of serpent seeds doctrine that's going on in the world where people are trying to portray that, that Eve had some kind of relationship with the devil and, and how that's where Cain come from and that's where uh, Abel come from. Well, that's a lie. Thank God. That's a lie right out of hell. Thank God. That's some, some kind of cr cruel thing. Yeah, thank you. Yet it's not even moral. Thank God to even teach that thing. And I know a lot of churches are teaching that. I had a preacher one time. I heard him teaching it and I wouldn't ask him about it. I said, where'd you get that at, brother? And he said, well, I got the Bible. I said, no. I said, you never got that out of the Bible. And God, he said, oh, yeah. He said, that's where I got it. I said, I'll tell you where you got it from. You got it from old Branham. That preacher Branham, thank God. That's his teaching. That's his doctor. That's where you got that. And he agreed finally that, yeah, that's where he got it at. Thank God. I said, because you never got it out of the Bible. Thank God. They even tried to use the fig tree over there in the 24th chapter of Matthew. Thank God. But he said, when you see the fig tree and it, it's time for the fruit to come on, he said, you know the summers and I and don't have anything to do with this tree that's here in the garden. It don't have any nasty sexual act and people do it. I know even young people and see even some of my own family they got. I thought they talked about this stuff and they taught it to their children. Well, I'll tell you what, it's nasty and it's a lie, thank God. I tell you what, Eve didn't have nothing to do with nobody except Adam, thank God. That was her husband. I'll tell you what, amen. She had two children. She had two children, thank God. One of them was Cain and the other was Abel, thank God. And it wasn't anything that was handed down like that, thank God. But the thing about this, Cain had an evil seed. He didn't want them, he was just going to be disobedient to God and Abel was going to be obedient to God. And that's the same thing today. That's what's come out of the Garden of Eden. There's two seeds that's come out of there. There's a good seed and there's a bad seed. How many believe that tonight? There's two churches tonight. There's a good church and there's a bad church. I know today we're saying everybody's a good church. Everything's good. Ain't got, but I'm going to tell you what, everything ain't good. Because I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot of preachers that's deceiving people and taking them down to a lake of fire. And they're patting them on the back and telling them they're all right. But I'll tell you what, one of these days they're going to give an account for it. Amen. Because I believe that God has revealed the truth to us and they will not walk in it. They won't preach it. They won't talk it. They let everybody do what they want to do. But I'm going to tell you something. God's word is going to judge us all the end of the way. There might be more preachers in hell than there is people. Because their Bible said they're going to receive a greater damnation. But I'm just, I'm just looking here. Let's talk about this. Have an understanding. You know things. You shouldn't mess with anything that you doubt. Amen. If you doubt something, you shouldn't mess with it. It's just like this. I don't know what she partook of, Brother Johnny, but I knew whatever she done, it opened up her eyes. And you know, I'll tell you something right now. Thank God, I used to smoke. I used to smoke like a freight train. But I'll tell you what. If I had never ever touched that first cigarette, I would have never been able to be tempted with it. Amen. Amen. If I'd have never touched the first one, 
I mean, there, I watch other people do it, and it looked good. I've even watched people chew tobacco, and I've thought, boy, that looks so good, watching them chew and slobber and spit that stuff. And I've tried it, and every time I've tried it, I got sick, and God, God didn't want us to chew in that stuff anyway. God made that for the tobacco worm. That's the one that's supposed to chew that. That's not for people to chew. But I'm just, what I'm trying to say is I remember being a young man, and it tempted me. It looked good to me. When other kids smoked, or I saw the older people smoking, it made it look good to me. Hey God, but you know what? If I had never touched one, I would never have to fight with the temptation. I would never have to war with that in my mind. Hey God, I want you to know tonight that if Eve had never touched that, that tree, thank God, if she had never touched that fruit, she had never had to go through sin. She had never been tempted. She had never had to take the death. There would never be a disease called cirrhosis of the liver tonight if it hadn't been for somebody taking that first drink. Somebody defiling the grape, thank God, or defiling on the fruit that make a drink that God you can get drunk on and destroy your body. That's just what I'm saying. Sin comes, thank God. We brought sin upon ourselves, thank God. Sin came from the garden, thank God. You know what? There wasn't no sickness back there. There wasn't no disease, thank God. Amen. Everything was perfect, thank God. Hallelujah to God. There wasn't no death. There wasn't anything like that. But because of sin, men brought that things up on them. And I'm just trying to say tonight, I try to get people to hold back here and hold yourselves back. If you don't mess with sin and you don't do things that's contrary to God then the devil can't tempt you with it take two young people they want the, the first thing they start tempted to be together are tempted to be together. And there used to be a law in the home where we stood up against that. And we said, you know, that you don't do that. You don't leave them alone by themselves. Thank God, because you're old enough to know that them things is going on. But today, the parents encourage that stuff and they get it to try to get it to go on. And it's going on until there's no shame in it, nobody. Nobody's not ashamed to do it. And thank God they're, they're like dogs. You know, you know, it's just like, and I hate to use this as an example, but I can only be as plain as I can. But you take animals when they're in heat, thank God, or when they're going about to do, you know, that, that kind of a thing, there's nothing stronger than that sin. When that sin gets a hold of them, thank God, it just make them do all kinds of stuff. They'll make brothers fight against one another. Amen. I remember one time that the, the bunch of, they had a little pup that was up in my Aunt Nancy's, and, and there was a dog, and one female dog under there, and I had a whole bunch of male dogs, and they was all under the trailer, and got one of them got a hold of that pup, and, and pulled his shoulder out of socket, thank God. And then they finally had to, to shoot the little fella. And I remember, thank God, of his own friends, his own buddies, and he ran around with there. Thank God, I know this dog, but that's why I looked at it as a kid. And I thought, how could your own buddy, thank God, or one of your friends, get up underneath the floor and try to kill you and tear you apart like that? But that's what sin does, thank God. It makes men kill over, thank God. And a lot of men kill, thank God, because of jealousy. Thank God, because of how they feel about a woman or one man messing with another man's woman and all them temptations and them feelings are in the world and people and God they don't know thank God in Romans thank God he said that the wages of sin is death thank God in other words if I go work on a job and I and I, whatever I do I'm going to get wages for it thank God and they say well how much you get in an hour how much you get in a year how much you get in a month thank God you get wages but for sure tonight the wages of sin is death and if we get a hold of sin and we obey sin thank God the more we obey it, the worse we're going to get. Thank God, finally, the devil will destroy you. You look at the young people that's in our community and in our areas, even our families, that's strung out on drugs so bad. I mean, to God, if they'd have never smoked that first joint, if they'd have never took that first pill, I, I mean, to God, if they'd have stayed away from it and not been a part of it, thank God, they could have never been tempted with it. They wouldn't be fighting with it right now. Thank God, if that young woman, thank God, if she hadn't given in <laughs> to the young man, thank God she never, she wouldn't have had to suffer the temptation that people to do today. One of the women that walk on the streets, uh, and you know what I'm talking about. We got children that's in here tonight, thank God. But once they give themselves to that part of life, and they see how easy it is to make money by doing it, that's what that drawing power is, to go back and live that kind of a life, because it's easier, you don't have to work. That's the same way with people that deal drugs, uh, they find out how easy it is to make money with it. Uh, and they don't have to work uh, and they have that temptation to go back and be a part of it. I know what it is, Brother Johnny, because I did it at one time. I don't worry about it now, thank God. But if I had never did it, I would have never been able to be tempted with it. Yeah. I was with a lot of young people and we tried a lot of things when I was young. 
But I, I, I was in my 30s before I ever tried anything hard enough. Thank God it would, would hurt me. Of course, it all hurt me that I was up in my 30s. And, and when somebody introduced me to that, and I remember I, I was afraid of it. And I didn't want it. I, I didn't want to touch that stuff. And I'd have heard so much bad about it. And they'd say, oh, come on. Say, it won't hurt you. You know, I even remember who it was. Thank God. They said, oh, come on. Just try it. Thank God. You'll like it. And you know what, Brother Johnny, I did. I tried it. You know what, I liked it. And it wasn't very long, thank God, that I was trying it again. Then I was buying some of it. Then I seen how easy it was to sell. Then I made, I bought some to sell. I found how easy it was. And it's like a lure. It just draws you in. That's what's going on in the world today. People's getting lured in by, lured in by. And it ain't because people's bad. And God, it's because they're hooked on this stuff. It's taking over their lives, just, just like a sexual lust. Things are taking over people's minds, taking over their heart, their thoughts. And the devil, thank God, and I know you can look and see the world, can't you? You can see the world, they're taken in by all this stuff. And God, but you ought to be able to look out there and say, thank God, that's going to keep me from getting in there. I see what's happened to other people. I want to learn from that. Do you remember that Nebuchadnezzar had a son or a grandson? According to history, his name was Belshazzar. The Bible talks about him. Hallelujah to God. How, thank God, that he was, wouldn't humble himself down before God. And he kept getting in trouble. Hallelujah. And then, thank God, he even, he was so wicked, thank God, that he said, he's having a big drunken party and he sent down to the house of the Lord and he said let's get the vessels of the Lord and let's bring them up here and let's drink wine out of them you know that's what the devil wants to do tonight he'd like to get you and drink wine out of you, he'd like to get you on dope or get you hooked up on something and God said that it would mock God the devil wants to mock God he wants to use you to mock God he wants to get you to draw back into perdition but the Bible said we're not of them to draw back into perdition but we're of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. How many believe we hold on to the end we're going to make? we got to keep on going. Keep on going. Thank God. Amen. People are, people are overcome by this stuff. Thank God. And we got to realize that just because you go to church, that don't mean that you ain't going to get it. Because a lot of people, thank God, they went to the doctors. And the doctors has got them hooked on this stuff. Thank God, if they're doing it illegally, you got people that come to church that's all zonked out, way out of some, in left field somewhere, and the devil's given to them. Hallelujah to God. And I know down through the years, I've watched it kill people. I've even told them, Brother Johnny, what was wrong with them. I told them, I said, you need to get off some of that stuff. You you need to find out from your doctor you really need all that. And a lot of times it ain't so much the doctor. It's people take more, thank God, and they're supposed to take. And I'll tell you tonight, if you're taking more than what they tell you to take, it's wrong for you to do it tonight. You get hooked on that stuff, right? You get hooked on that stuff. I'll tell you what, when I was younger, I wanted to take something to make me go fast. And now I'm old and I don't take anything and I'm going fast and I can't slow down. Amen. That's why I've got a bad heart. Hallelujah to God because I did those kind of things in my life. And that's what he told old Belshazzar. Hallelujah to God, old Belshazzar. He was so wicked. He said, I'll tell you what, let's, let's just send down there and get them vessels. Uh, thank God, see Nebuchadnezzar, when he went down to, get down to Judah, down to Jerusalem, he carried away all the gold and the silver, thank God, out of the temple of the Lord and burned it down with fire and carried all the children of Israel out. What a terrible thing. And that went on, thank God. And all the things that was dedicated to God, they carried them up and put them, thank God, in the treasure house. And they're God's, hallelujah. And when he got us, he is so bringing in wicked. And he said, go down there and get them vessels. And bring them up here. We'll drink wine in them. And he said, they went down there and got them. And they toasted, thank God, and they drank in them. Thank God. And all of a sudden, while they was drinking, hallelujah, the old king was sitting there. And he said, was a hand uh, that come up here before him uh, and it began to write on the wall. Uh, hallelujah to God, it began to write on the wall. Uh, he said, it shook the old king up to that. And he said, his loins just spoke together. Uh, hallelujah to God, his God just scared him to death. Uh, and he was trying to find out what the writing meant. But see, God was a sin in that writing. God was writing that writing on the wall. Thank God. Hallelujah to God. And they finally, they couldn't find nobody to interpret it. And they finally told Daniel, thank God, he, he went in, he was able to interpret for him. And I believe it said something, if I'm pronouncing it right, he said, Mina, Mina, tickle you, Farsam. He said, oh, king, you're found in the balance. 
And you're found walking, thank God, that the kingdom's departed from you and given to the Medes and the Persians. And I leave God from what I understand. And according to history, thank God that they didn't even fight a battle. When Babylon fell to the Persian king, I they didn't even have to fight, thank God, because they dammed up the stream underneath the city and they come in under the water ducts. And I guess before they even knew it, thank God that the Persian army had come right up inside the city and took the city. That old king was a drinking the party and having a good time. At the very time, thank God, he was trying to find out what the handwriting was saying whether the enemy was coming underneath the wall to take the city. And I'm telling you now sometimes when people's trying to figure out things on the road and they're not letting God show them the way, they're going to be waiting for somebody to interpret the handwriting thank God until the enemy has come in your house and taken you up. Nobody backslides overnight, children. It happens over a period of time. And the devil just comes in and takes a little bit Comes in and gets you to go along with something. Gets you to press you along. Yeah. You might think it, that's why God doesn't want us to uh, be uh, unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That don't mean you don't have nothing to do with people, but when you get out with people and people as unbelievers, and if you're not careful and if you're not strong enough, they'll pull you away and they'll get you to do things. Ain't God is contrary to God. I've been there for a long time. I still have temptations that come to me. And I have to resist them temptations. I gotta put them away from me. We're not above temptation tonight. We're gonna to go to James chapter one. Help the Lord. James chapter one. James is a tongue book. People think Corinthians talks about tongues. No, first James talks about tongues. Talk about people talk too much. Amen. I've heard people say, I, I tell you what, God just tempted, tempts me with this stuff. How many heard people say that? Yeah. God tempts me with this. Let's see what the Bible says. Verse 13, James 1 and 13. If you have an attribute about yourself, a weakness inside yourself, that's what the devil's going to work on you with. I used to gamble on everything. I gambled on horses and ball games and, and I pull everything I wanted to bet on everything. And you know what? I, I, I don't bet on nothing. I don't gamble on nothing. Thank God, I, I, I don't play cards. I don't, I don't do those things no more. I used to. I, I, I do a high card. Game. Thank God for $50. Thank God. But I, I tell you what, I, I don't want to live that way no more. That's a different person. Amen. I see other people. I see people that gamble, thank God. And I used to run around with them. Thank God, brother Chris, if you would watch them and see their life. Thank God I know they love them. I kind of watch him sometimes. He's an old friend of mine. We used to run together. And then just if you watch his life and what he shows you on, on, on Facebook and on there, you know, you know that he's, he's out there gambling, going to casinos, you know, and it just looks like he's just having the time of his life. Because I know what he's doing, Brother Johnny. But I know the times that we'd go out and stay all night too. Wouldn't even have gas money to get home. Wouldn't have enough money to get something to eat. Or we'd gamble off all we had. Hallelujah to God. And it looks good. Thank God. Just like this lottery. Thank God people play this lottery all the time. But there's probably nobody. Thank God. That's not one that lottery that ain't ended up being in trouble. And all kinds of problems. Thank God. If it ain't worth working for tonight, it ain't worth that. I ain't going to be popular for this kind of preaching. But don't tell me you can't play the lottery. Why would you take a chance of taking your money away from taking a chance on something? All right, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted. Everybody, anybody been tempted before? I have. Everybody been tempted? Amen. Everybody's tempted. Let no man say when he is tempted. I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. God can't be tempted with evil. It's impossible. And he's not going to tempt you. If you're tempted, the Bible said, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and the tithe. So things that's in you, the attributes about yourself, and God, them's the things, and God, that that works on you. Just like 
Sister Angie talking about pride. That's something that works on a lot of people. People don't know they have pride. Thank God, but you know what? God can bring you down a path and he'll show you pride. Amen. He'll show you things in your life. Thank God. And you know why? You won't even know they're there. Thank God. It might be a little child come up to you. Thank God. And you won't realize, thank God, the things that you're in your life. But the very weakest things, that's what the devil's going to work. If you got a trouble with your temper, if you got a, a trouble with your attitude, that's the thing the devil's going to work on the most because he can use the weakest place of you to try to bring you down and tear you down. Thank God. Have you ever thought about Judas? Thank God. And I don't know if y'all ever thought about this before, but I was thinking about about this this afternoon. I was laying and thinking about this. You know, Judas, thank God, and you wonder, well, how in the world could he do what he did with Jesus, thank God? How could he sell the Lord? How could he turn his back on Jesus Christ? How could he do what he done? Thank God, he was one of the twelve apostles, and he had gifts, thank God. He had power. The Bible said they all went out and preached and healed the sick, and I no doubt he was one of them. He had done the same thing. He had preached. He had went out. He had saw the miracles just like all the rest of them. He had been a part of their ministry and God and walked with them and walked with the Lord and slept with him and ate with him and got in all that thing. But there's something that you might not notice, thank God, that through the story, he always carried the money back. Yes. He carried the money back. Mm -hmm. I believe a lot, there's a lot of preachers that's good, but when the money starts rolling in, that's what gets them in trouble, thank God. I believe that's what's happened to a lot of churches. When the money gets rolling in and you can take it, don't have to worry about it, don't have to give an account for it, thank God. I tell you what, I think we all have to give an account for everything we do. Amen. But he was tempted. He said he carried the money back. You know what? He even got against Jesus. Remember the woman that come in and was going to anoint him, anoint Jesus, thank God, for his burial. Of course, they didn't know he was going to die. All he said to do, he said, this, this ointment could have been sold for 300 pence and given to the poor. But even right there in the scriptures that he never said that because he cared for the poor, but he said it because he carried the money back. There was an attribute about him. There was something in him, thank God, that he had never let go of. It was always there. There's a little bit of greed there. He's always wanting stuff. Tempted with something, thank God. There's people that do anything. They, they had to they had to pull the their eye teeth out of their mother, thank God, to get the gold out of them. I'll tell you what, it, it's so bad, people will steal off one another and take what one another has. Thank God, I've seen down through the years where people even stole out of the church house. I, I remember my, I remember my, my, my brother-in-law one time, thank God, he had a young boy in the church, he took up the offering, amen, and when he'd go in the back, he was sitting around putting it in his pocket. That's a terrible thing to think, ain't it? I'd be scared to death to do something like that. And he said he would have never knew it. He said, but he said, he said the, Brother Charlie said, how threw a $20 bill in the basket that night. And he said, when I took the offering that night, that $20 bill wasn't there. He said, I would have never knew that. Thank God. So he, I guess he did it again. And then that's how he caught him. And you know what? The boy owned up to it. And that's just what I'm saying. There's things in people. Do you remember when Achan stole the garment? Thank God. He took it home and hid it in his tent. He sold, he sold the gold, the wedge of gold. Thank God I think it was in the Babylonian garment. He took it home. There's an attribute about him. Even though God caused the city of Jericho to fall down. And they went in there. Thank God. And looted what, what was there. God gave them the city. I mean you think what a great thing God did for his people. But yet there was wickedness in Achan's heart. He wanted the money. Thank God. He had to have something for himself. Thank God. Like somebody was saying a while ago, all people think about themselves and what they can get. Thank God. Well, that's the way he was. But he came down. He, the Bible said, be sure your sins will find you out. Thank God. Things will happen. Thank God. It'll bring it all out in the open. If you remember old brother David, thank God the things that he did. Thank God God brought it out in the open. Even though God forgave him, but still yet he suffered all his life because of the things he did. We're going to suffer for the things we did. Amen. Amen. We just ain't going to be. I know God will forgive us. Amen. But I'm, I'm just telling you. Thank God. If I, get, if I go commit a crime. And I did commit a crime. Thank God. I, I, when I got caught. Amen. I, I, I didn't want to go. And I asked the Lord. Please Lord. Don't let me go. Amen. I don't want to go in there and be in no jail. I don't want to go through this. But you know what? I committed the time. Or committed the crime. I had to do the time. <coughs> Amen. Yeah. I was a Christian. But you know what? I made. I took the benefit of it while I was inside that jail. I got to witness to people and talk to people about the Lord, and that's how I got my strength. 
was I was in there doing God's work. And today, if we'll do God's work, God will give us strength. He'll help us to grow and give us power to overcome in this world. You want help? Pray for somebody else. If you're sick, go out and pray for somebody. Find somebody else to pray for. Amen. I'll tell you what. I'm going to read a little bit more in James. Verse 15. Verse 14 said, That every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it what? It bringeth forth death. Has the things changed from that? Adam and Eve's time to mine and your time? Don't sin still bring death, thank God. Don't it bring us to a lake of fire? Thank God if you ever thought, thank God how there was a, you remember the, uh, you remember Elijah? Amen. There was, a, there was Elijah and then there was Elisha. Amen. We read about them in the book of Kings. Thank God how the Elijah was a great prophet. They have the Lord. He was keeping carried up, thank God. Amen. And how Elisha went behind him. You know, Elisha was his, Elijah Elijah was the first runner, and Elijah, he was the one that run behind him. Finally, when the heat went up, thank God, the man was left to Elisha. Well, there was a man, thank God, that was there before Elisha. There was a man named Jehazah. Thank God, I think that's how you pronounce it, Jehazah. Thank God that it was Elijah's servant, thank God. He, ran, he just ran before just like Elisha did. Amen, thank God. He had the same opportunity as everybody else. But there was something about Jehazah, thank God, something that worked on him, thank God, and something that tempted him. Amen, even though he saw all the miracles and all the things that Elijah did, and he walked with Elijah, and no doubt he could have been a partaker of the same thing that Elijah did, but there was something in his heart. Do you remember how the, when Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army, how he had leprosy, and he went Thank God to, to Elijah. And Elijah even he even had so much confidence in Je Jehazah. And he told him, he said, "You go out and tell him, thank God, if he'll go dip himself in the river of Jordan seven times, he said he'll come away clean. He'll heal him of that leprosy because Naaman had leprosy. His body had leprosy on him. Thank God, he knew. Thank God, he couldn't get no help. That's to make a long story short, though. Thank God, he went he went up there and, and he he." Dipped in, the, dipped in the river seven times in Jordan. And the Bible says, thank God, that he came out of there clean. He never had no leprosy, thank God. His flesh was clean like a young man. Hallelujah, God. You just think about that. What a power, thank God, that this man witnessed this. He, this man, Jehaza, he even went and told this king, this it's captain. He said, well, Elijah said that you could never dip seven times in the river of Jordan. Thank God that God's going to God's gonna cleanse you. You know what? The old captain, Nathan, he said, well, I thought he would uh, come down here and strike up on the ground and call upon his God and, and pronounce me clean. Thank God. Uh, he, got, he was in wrath. He talked about the rivers in Damascus. Why couldn't he go down to the rivers in Damascus and be clean? And God, why couldn't, why do you have to go that old dirty Jordan down there for? And God, and he went and the city went away in a rage. He was mad. Hallelujah to God. But when he got away, his servants began to say, you know, if God would, if the man of God would have given you some great feat to do, you would have done that. But he said he just told you a small thing. All you had to do is dip seven times into Jordan and your, your, your old lepers would be cleansed. And you want know he humbled himself down? He went down to the old Jordan River, Brother Johnny, and he did what the man of God said when he come up out of there. That old leprosy was gone. I don't say, hallelujah to God. It don't say he was dancing, but I'd say if it had been me, I'd have been dancing jig when I come up out of there and I saw all that leprosy gone off from it. And he come back. He made a trip and took his host back down to where Elijah was at. He said, I'm going to tell you, there's only one God in all the earth. It's the God of Israel. I tell you what, our testimony, if we really got God in our life, it'll be alive. He ain't going to be dead tonight. That's what he had a testimony of the Lord. He said, here, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you something. Thank God. Here, I'm going to give you some money. And Elijah said, no, said, we don't want your money. Amen. We want God to get the glory. Amen. That ain't the way people are today. Hallelujah to God. I tell you what. But you know what? After they left, thank God, old Jehoshaphat. Thank God, him and one of these one of the other servants, they went along, they followed old Naaman. Thank God, they went down there and told him, said, well, master, change his mind. Said he would like to have, he, he wouldn't want anything, but he'd like us to have something. You know, maybe give us a 
some sack of silver, I can't remember what it was, and some changes of raiment, and the old, old name that he was so happy was sure. He said, here, take two bags. Thank God, and give them all, give them that silver. Thank God, and give them the clothing. Thank God, they, they was all happy, and they went back, but they wanted to hide it from Elijah. Thank God, they said they took it and put it in the house, and then he went down old Je Jehazi, he went down there and just like he always did, went down there where Elijah was at, and Elijah said, did my spirit go with you? Thank God. He said, where are you been at? He said, oh, I ain't been nowhere. He said, well, do you know that my spirit went with you? Thank God. He said, there's a time for us to take vineyards and, and take pay for everything. Thank God. of what God done. And he said, I'm going to tell you right now. My old fella, old Gaza, he said, the same leprosy. Thank God that was on uh, the old name. And he said, it's going to be on you and on your house. Hallelujah. Uh, God, he was white as snow. I tell you what, be careful tonight. Be sure your sins will find you out. If we got attributes about us that's weak tonight, hallelujah to God, if we're not careful, the devil will take advantage of it. He'll take over our lives and over our families tonight, and we won't be able to do what we're supposed to do. If you find something wrong in your life, you need to get rid of it. Amen. You need to crucify it. Do away with it. I'll tell you what, have you ever thought about David? David was a king. He was a king. He was God's, a man after God's own heart. But David had a weakness with women, like a lot of men do. Maybe some men in here have not got weaknesses. Be careful tonight, thank God. Hallelujah to God, don't put yourself in a position to where you can't get out of, thank God. Hallelujah to God, the same thing with women. Don't get yourself, if you know you can be tempted, don't get yourself in that position. Thank God, the word of the devil can cause you to slip and cause you to fall, thank God. Because he'll take every door knob, every handle he can to get there, he will. I see, I see women all the time. Nothing wrong with me looking at a woman. But if I drop around the block and look at her again, then I'm in trouble. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The Bible said it's not the act, thank God, it's but the thinking in your mind. Thank God. Our thoughts, we're going to be judged for our thoughts. That's why the, the law wasn't strong because it cannot convince the mind, thank God. But the Holy Ghost, it comes in and it convinces your mind. It'll teach you in your mind. That's what Jesus told them. All. Some of them will justify themselves about putting their life away for every cause, thank God. And Jesus condemned what they was doing. They said, hey, he said, thank God, if a man look up a woman to lust after, he's committed adultery already in his heart. And you know what? There was probably a bunch of them there, Brother John. Thank God it has never committed adultery. Thank God with another woman ever cheated on her wife. But in her mind, they had wondered about it, thought, thought about it, and it was on her mind just like a lot of people today. They'll sit and look at all kinds of pictures and, and watch movies and get on the internet and look at stuff. Thank God. I tell you what, you better be careful what you're looking at. He said, I don't see it. It'll get a hold of you. That temptation, thank God. It's strong. Your old flesh is weak if you don't stay close to God. Everybody's got secret things in their minds. Nobody knows your mind. What if we, what if everybody can see what we was thinking? Well, I'll tell you what, we'd be a praying bunch in, wouldn't we? Yeah. I'll guarantee we'd be a praying bunch. If everywhere you went, the people could see your thoughts, what you used to think, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, you drop your head down all the time. Oh, Lord, help me, God. I know it might sound like I'm making a joke out of it, but I'm not. I'm trying to make the seriousness of it. That's why how much we ought to be on guard. Thank God. I'll tell you what, whatever your weakness is, that's what you got to work on. If somebody, if you do somebody wrong, you can go give them all the money that you got, but it still ain't going to make it right. God wants you to make things right yourself. If you talk about somebody, run somebody down, then you need to make it right. So you can have a good conscience. When we come before the Lord, we want a good conscience. How many wants a good conscience? When you get down to pray, you want anything to hinder your prayers? I don't want anything to hinder my prayer. And I don't want to live any kind of life or do anything or go anywhere that's going to hinder my prayers toward other people. I know sometimes I've, I've seen preachers and I'd watch them pray and I, I didn't have a bit of confidence in them. Mm -hmm. And I've had people come in the hospital and want to anoint my family and I say, no, I don't want you anointed. Amen. I don't want you anointed. 
He was all, I don't care, no, it's me, I care. I don't care who prays for me. If I can pray, I'll pray with anybody. When it comes to anointing me with oil, I, I, want to be, I want to be a man of God. I want to be like the Bible said. I mean, say amen. amen. I mean, I don't, you just don't do everything. And everybody, I know there's been a time where everybody just grab out the anointing oil and they go out knowing everybody. Thank God they even rub it all over. Even one sister told me in their church, thank God, that when she got sick today and poured oil in a pan in the middle of the floor and they got her to take her shoes off and get in and then stand and pray for her. There ain't no Bible that never says stuff like that. Amen. See, that's the kind of stuff that makes the church be evil spoken of. A lot of things people's done, things that's went on. Amen. And people say God said, but God didn't say. God didn't give us that commandment to do that. Amen. Amen. They talked about the church up there. They had a night, the same night they did that with the oil in this church. Thank God they said they had seven preachers that got up and preached. And, and that it was like they was trying to mimic the, the high priest where if he wasn't living right, they pulled him out of the pulled him out of the tabernacle. Thank God, but they said every time one of the preachers that got up, they tied a rope around his leg. And when they figured he was done preaching, the people got up, got the rope, pulled him out of the pulpit. You know what? People go and does that stuff because they don't know any better. I'd be scared to death in something like that. I'd be scared to death to be in a place like that. Yeah. I've had people say, I've been in snake handling churches. No, I ain't never been in one. If I had thought this, Handling one, I would go in there. Yeah. Amen. I know it's against God's will and it's tempting God. Amen. But I'm not going to be in there around no snakes anyhow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. How many loves the Lord tonight? Yeah. How many see your weaknesses? You got weaknesses in your life. Yeah. Amen. The same thing. And this Eve, she had a weakness. Man, that food looks good. You ever been fasting? Some kid come up licking an ice cream cone. Boy, you find out how strong you are. Amen. Your mouth just waters and dries up. You're just, oh my. And all you can think about it, after a couple of days of fasting, the first thing you do when you get off that fast, you go uptown and get your big ice cream cone. Because your flesh. And that's what we're trying to overcome. Jesus, <coughs> overcome our flesh. I love every one of you tonight. Amen. I, I want to I wanna teach something to people because... That's what the scripture says. I know people were ever, it's just a joy and dancing and having a big time, but I'm gonna tell you what, there's it's not easy to die. Do you know we're dying tonight? Amen. We're suffering, every one of us. We're dying. Our old flesh is dying. You know what? Either way, it's gonna die. God's gonna come, thank God. And we're gonna have to give us a count. And you know what grace is? God has given us grace. Grace is it's like a time of favor. Thank God. In other words, under the law, if you've done anything wrong, they took you out and stoned you to death. There wasn't no mercy. But under the grace period of a dispensation that we're under now, if we'll come to God, God will give us time to rectify the things that we've done, to make things right. But it's time that people start getting things right and not keep adding to their sin. Amen. We can't add sin to sin. Let's all stand. Y'all give us a song tonight. <coughs> Amen. Did I go over time tonight, Randy? I didn't do too bad. All right. Amen. God is good tonight. He's worthy to be praised. I want to I wanna live for him. And all things, we want to preach things and dig ourselves out, dig us out. I like to read the Bible when it digs me out. When I'm sitting up at night and I'm reading, thank God I, I find things about myself. You know what? God shows us these things so we can quit them. Amen? Amen. I'm glad that God showed me. The Bible says many as he rebukes, he loves, he, he rebukes, and he chastens. And the thing about it is, the things of our mind. Don't think those things. The Bible said charity thinketh no evil. Thinketh no evil.